So welcome to this video, my name is Alexander Bell and I'd like to start this video by asking you a question. Do you think you are part of the cult? Now, Of course that's a strange question to ask you but once I've explained exactly what I'm talking about then hopefully you'll see more clearly that there are some very large cults operating in our society and many of us are unwittingly part of these cults. But first we have to understand exactly what a cult is. So a cult is essentially a group of people, it can be a small group or a large group, and they all share the same belief system. Now there's nothing strange about that because there's plenty of groups in our world who all share the same belief system. But what makes it a cult is that it is frowned upon and strongly discouraged to question the belief system. So once a group of people starts encouraging or putting pressure on the other members of that group not to question the belief system, that makes it a cult. Because if you have a belief system and, it's, and there's no, nothing wrong with questioning it, you're welcome to choose that belief system or reject that belief system and there's no, no pressure put on you, then there's no, there's no cult, you're free. But the cult is all about controlling the minds of the members of the cult so that they do not question the belief system and therefore they, they're enslaved, their mind is essentially enslaved, the mind is encouraged to commit to this belief system and not to question it. So this is why cults are dangerous because you can have belief systems which are erroneous yet you're encouraged or the members are encouraged not to question it and to be committed to this belief system unquestioningly and obviously this can lead in some very unpleasant directions. Now one thing to understand is in cults a lot of the beliefs may be accurate, <clears throat> they may be, maybe um, the bulk of the beliefs may be accurate but there may be one core belief of this belief system which is not accurate and so the people you know you can the members of a cult can be very intelligent very self-aware and they can they can recognize that there's a lot of truth to what they believe but there might be just one core issue that's not true and that's what the cult hinges upon and they're encouraged not to question that one thing <clears throat> and the way they're encouraged the way pressure is put on people not to question the belief system which they share is by the threat of humiliation the threat of social rejection the, s the threat of being mocked and socially ostracized this is the, the threat that hangs over people's heads to encourage them not to question not to question the belief system. And of course in more extreme regimes then the threat increases. The threat can be imprisonment or the threat can be death even. But generally the cults that we have in our society um, they operate with this threat of social humiliation, this threat of being mocked, outcast, being made fun of by the majority or the rest of the members of society. So if we look at our society and, and we ask ourselves, well, are there any belief systems which the media is telling us we shouldn't question? Is there any, are there any belief systems which the media is encouraging us to mock those who question or disbelieve or to even feel angry with those who question the belief system? Because that's proof of a cult when you're strongly discouraged from questioning the belief system which we're all supposed to believe, we're all supposed to get on board and the media is encouraging us to get on board and really all share this strong belief and the strong passion which comes with this belief and yet at the same time it's encouraging you not to question it and to mock and ridicule and be angry with anyone who questions it, that is a cult guaranteed through and through. That is complete um, complete occult, that's a complete cultish structure and the only reason it wouldn't be, the only thing it would make it not a cult is if it would be okay, if it would be okay to question, it would be okay to disagree, it would be okay to raise your voice and say hang on a second this doesn't make sense, this doesn't all add up to me, if that's okay then it's not a cult but as we can see in our society through the media a lot of pressure is being put on people to reject anybody who questions specific beliefs and to socially ostracize or mock or humiliate or just be incredibly rude and angry with anyone who questions these, these core beliefs of the group 
these group beliefs. Now, one thing I want to say right here is that um, in any cult, there is a leading force who kind of encourages you what you're supposed to believe. They tell you what you're supposed to believe. So in this case, it's the media. In our case, in our society, the, the leading force which tells us what we should and shouldn't believe is the media. So the media puts it everywhere, in every, everywhere possible, on the screens, in our magazines, you know, on the radio. The message is broadcast. This is, this is the right thing to believe. And so that's, that's the cult leader telling us what we should believe. And then a cult leader in, a, in, a, in what you might call an ordinary cult, where there's a, a human being, they will reference some kind of authority <clears throat> say, well, this is why you should believe. So either it's, it's usually a spiritual authority. They'll say, well, God, God has told me this is going to happen. God has told me that we have to prepare ourselves for this. So everybody, you have to do what I say because God has told me. So that's how a cult works. It references some divine, unquestion unquestionable authority, like God. No one can question that. And they say, well, God has told me this, so you can't question that. And now this is what we have to do. And so everybody kind of takes that authority, they take the authority that's come from God, it's coming through the cult leader, and they say, okay, well, I must believe this, this must be true, <clears throat> because they believe, the, uh, they believe the divine authority, or the members of the cult who believe in God will, believe, will trust the divine authority. What, in our case, in our society, <clears throat> the divine authority isn't God, it's science. So the cult leader, which is the media, <clears throat> the media will say, science has said this is true and so this is what you have to do because science has said this is true science has said this is going to happen so you have to believe what we say the media what we the media say you have to do what how you have to react how you have to respond because we have it on authority from science and you can't doubt science you can't question science so now you have to do what we say because we have the authority of science behind us. So you have to listen what we, to what we say and you have to do it. And if you question, if you question the divine authority, if you question science, then you're going to be ridiculed and you're going to be made fun of. And we're going to get all of our cult members to be angry with you for questioning the divine authority. We're going to be, <clears throat> you're, you're going to be made fun of, you're going to be humiliated, you're going to be mocked, you're going to be put in this box as one of the weird ones who's questioning, one of the... Uh, one of the um, um, kind of rebellious ones who's questioning the divine authority and we're going to make you pay for it. This is how a cult operates. This is the kind of pressure it puts on the cult members to conform the beliefs so that we all believe the same thing and nobody questions it because <coughs> it's coming from a divine authority. So a cult will always encourage um, kind of radical action without much thought, without much consideration. It says, this is the action. Don't think about it. This is what we need to do. Just do it. And, um, and cults obviously are always are about control because the cult leader wants to have control. It's a drug. We have to understand that control is a drug. So when there's a person that has control over a group of people, they're getting fed by that sense of control. Because when love is absent, then the, the human being will seek for another substance, a substitute for love. And it's always control and power, power and control. So obviously, you know, there are, there are um, organizations in our world which want to have more control. There are organizations which are power hungry. There are megalomaniacs in our society who tend to gather together to try and orchestrate things which will bring them more power. Now, I've studied the United Nations in great detail, and I mean great detail. I know a lot about the United Nations. And one of the most important things to understand about the United Nations is that it is a socialist communist organization. Many people don't realize this, but the United Nations was founded in 1945 by a convicted communist spy called Alger Hiss. The original United Nations Charter was co-authored by a Soviet communist called Andrei Vyshinsky. All ten Secretary Generals of the United Nations have either been communists, socialists or communist sympathizers. And, um, and also the, the emblem for the United Nations, if you know that blue emblem with the feathers, is a direct copy of the emblem for the Soviet Union.
And I've made a video about this and I'll put it in the description so you can see the facts and the proof for yourself. The United Nations is without doubt a communist organisation. And so, of course, they have a communist agenda. And if you know anything about communism, you'll understand that it's all about control. Communism is not about letting people live their lives, do what they want, you know, live life how they want. It's all about enforcing the way that you think is best. So the leaders at the top, they, they decide what's best, what would be best for society, and then they enforce that upon the members. They say, well, you have to live this way because we've decided it's best. We've decided this is the best way to live. So you have to live, we have to use force to uh, enforce this way of living upon you so that everything works the way we think is best. That's communism. Now, if the, uh, <laughs> you have to understand that when, you, when, you have, when you're using force and control, it can, it can never work. Because you take away people's freedom, you take away the one thing which, which uh, guarantees hum humanity. When you take away people's freedom, you take away the, uh, the, con the, um, the aspect of humanity. And you start controlling people, then humanity is lost when you're controlling. Controlling is the, kind of the death of true humanitarianism. So communism sounds like a great idea, but when the people at the top who are deciding what's best, when they are corrupt, then of course communism is an awful mess and a lot of suffering occurs and usually a lot of deaths occur as well. So well, let's get back to the United Nations. They've created this, um, <clears throat> this Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Living, which is their, their, you could say their plan to save the earth from climate catastrophe. And you have to understand also that the, all the evidence for climate catastrophe has come from the IPCC, which is a United Nations Department, the Independent Panel for Climate Change or Climate Control, Climate Change, I think, IPCC, and that is United Nations Department. So their own department is what's come up with all the evidence, with all the models, with all the scientific data, which everyone relies on to prove that urgent action is needed. We're on this, we're on the bridge. Now I'm not saying there is, I'm not saying there are no problems on the planet. I'm not saying that there are not, there are not um, um, ecological issues. Because I love this planet. I spend most of my time in nature. I love every living thing. I don't, I don't kill any creatures. I don't kill insects. I don't kill ants or mosquitoes. I love life. So I value this planet deeply and I'm, I'm not saying I don't recognise that there are significant ecological issues. What I'm saying is this whole climate panic, this, this idea that we have to act urgently because if we don't, there's going to be disaster. And the, and the need to radically change, radically change the way we live our lives and for us to lose a lot of the freedom we have to do certain things, this is cultish behaviour through and through. And like I said, at the top, the ones who are kind of um, fueling this idea of a climate catastrophe and providing all the uh, data for us being in a climate catastrophe and providing the solution to the climate catastrophe, which is the Agenda 2030 uh, for um, sustainable development, it's the United Nations one organization which just happens to be the most powerful organization on our planet they are the one world government and by this i mean that they have international rule of law because all the member nations gave up um, their independent sovereignty of law in 2015 they all signed over to the united nations that the united nations now have the international rule of law so the united nations are making laws for the whole planet. We don't realise this because it's, it looks like it, each, each, each country is moving at a different speed, but that's intentional. Each country is you know, implementing things at different speeds just so it doesn't look like a global takeover. But the United Nations are at the head of this and their agenda is global communism through and through. If you study the United Nations, if you look at their history, you look at their um, secretary generals over the past, and you, you look at the, um, the Agenda for Sustainable Development, 
it's an agenda for communism dressed up in fluffy sustainability language. Now, this video is about cults and the climate catastrophe, um, the climate catastrophe scenario, which we're not supposed to question, which we're frown, which people are getting, which people are getting angry if anyone speaks up and says, "Hang on a second, the uh, the facts don't all add up. Hang on a second, there's some of the science doesn't corroborate." Then people are getting angry. They're getting people are being encouraged to be angry with anyone who speaks up against it. Like, oh, you're just part of the right wing, um, planet hating, you know, CO two loving conspiracy theorists. Blah blah blah. But. One, one thing to understand in a cult is that there's always a psychology to dismiss anyone who might question the belief system. There's always um, things, there's also always kind of excuses, like a, uh, a kind of a fail-safe uh, rhetoric, which comes up in the face of anyone saying, well, hang on a second, these people, these people are saying that this isn't quite accurate. Well, the rhetoric is, oh, they're just, they're just funded by the, um, they're just funded by the oil fossil fuel industry. Well, hang on, hang on a second. These people, um, these people don't seem to agree with your outlook on, on why this is such a serious situation. Oh, they're just right wing conspiracy theorists. So that's what the cult will do. That it'll come up with answers that you don't even have to question because you could question, well, hang on a second. Let's look, are these people all funded by the fossil fuel industry? Are these scientists who are all saying the science doesn't add up? The maths of the figures don't all add up. Are they all funded by the fossil fuel industry? Well, let's look, shall we? No, no, don't look. Just believe us. They are. They are. They're all funded by the fossil fuel industry. Don't question it because it's true. The cult leader says it's true. So we don't question it. We just believe. Okay. And everyone repeats the mantra. Uh, anyone who disagrees is funded by the fossil fuel industry. Anyone who disagrees, anyone who disagrees is a right wing conspiracy theorist. And so these become our mantras to keep us in the cult. Because if we don't repeat those mantras, then we actually look, well, hang on, the cult leader says that all the people who disagree are funded by the fossil fuel industry. Well, let's investigate these people. Let's look into them. Let's, let's look at their character. What kind of people are they? Oh, hang on a second. This guy actually seems like a really decent guy. He's got a heart. He seems to care. He seems to care about the planet. He's actually got a, some, a lot of um, uh, recognition in the scientific scientific, scientific um, arena well you know there may be some truth to what he's saying maybe maybe this undermines a little bit this whole climate emergency situation you know if we just think like that if we keep our minds open then we will get to the truth but if we're allowed us if we allow ourselves to be brainwashed in the ways i've just told you and believe me it's happening if this is making you angry if it's making you angry that i'm suggesting that we should question these things then you have been brainwashed the cult has got into your head and told you that you should be angry with anyone who criticizes what it tells you is true. The cult leader has told you what's true. And anyone who criticizes the cult leader, well, they're dangerous. You know, ostracize them, humiliate them, be angry with them, insult them. This is what we're told, and this is the way a cult operates. It doesn't want you questioning, it doesn't want you investigating. Because it has an agenda. A cult always has an agenda. So what is the, if, if the climate emergency situation, which is going to, this year, I promise you, you'll see this in the next few months, uh, is going to require us to change our lives, to lose a lot of our freedoms, and to restrict the way we live our lives. And ultimately, it will restrict the things we use, the things we can do, the practices we engage in. It will restrict us, guaranteed, and you'll see this, then if you, want, if, um, if you can understand that, um, that there is, there's always an agenda with a cult, there's always an agenda, and the agenda here is to take away your freedom because it's a communist agenda, because at the top of the tree is the United Nations, a communist organization through and through who have a communist agenda, which is called Agenda 2030 for Sustainable De Development. Sounds lovely, but it's a communist agenda. And they are, um, they have creating, they've created the disaster, they've created the catastrophe with all the evidence that's come through the IPCC. 
So these are all predictions. The IPCC has given everyone predictions about future catastrophe. They're all models. So they're models about, well, if, if we keep creating this amount of CO2 and all these things keep going on as they are, then it's possible, it's likely that, oh my goodness, the earth's going to turn into a, like a sauna and we're all going to be fried alive, or oh my goodness, all the crops are going to fail, or oh my goodness, um, floods everywhere, great cataclysms, disaster, all the, all the species are going, to dis- all going to die and it's going to be hell on earth. Well, this essentially is what the IPCC's models have been predicting. However, like I said, they have, an, they have a vested interest because the IPCC is part of the United Nations and the United Nations have a communist agenda. I hope this is making sense because I'm not a right-wing conspiracy theorist. I'm liberal. If anything, I'm liberal and I'm liberal-minded and I keep my mind open and I don't just believe what the cult tells me. I question, I investigate and I've investigated this the, the climate emergency situation, I've investigated it to the nth degree. I've looked at both sides, I've looked at the evidence, the science, the predictions on both sides, and I have found a lot of very intelligent, reasonable, and sensible, um, very uh, well recognized, highly recognized uh, scientists who don't agree, who, who don't agree with this dramatic emergency situation. They agree that there's, there's some concern, but it's not an emergency. It's not this drastic situation which is going to require us to radically change our lives and take away our freedom. And of course, I've investigated, well, you know, are these people funded by the fossil fuel industry? Do they have vested interests? And in some instances, I've found that they are not. Of course, there are some people who are connected to the fossil fuel industry. I'm not an idiot. You know, I recognize this. I recognize that there are some people who who do want fossil fuels. They like fossil fuels because they've got a vested interest. But there are some very intelligent men, very top of the field, people who are at the top of the field, like John Christie, Professor John Christie, who has been attacked by many people because he tells the truth. And he is for sure not, um, not funded by the fossil fuel industry. He's won awards from NASA. He invented a, a way of measuring temperature in the upper atmosphere much more reliably than temperature on the ground. He's a well-respected scientist, very good man, and he, um, he goes in depth on why there is no emergency. It's not about whether there's a climate situation, it's about is there a climate emergency? Is it urgent that everything has to change quickly before, so we can avoid dis- destruction and uh, devastation? And if you listen to John Christie, then he, will, he gives a much more rational and calm um, uh, how can I say, insight into what's going on with the climate. He, he's an expert. He knows this. He's worked for NASA for 20 years, and he's a very humble, honest, and good man. So if there's one, one person you should investigate or listen to, it's Professor John Christie. And I've actually had some interactions with him by email, just asking him questions, you know, proposing, proposing questions and listen to what he said. And he's a good man. He's a good man, an honest man, a decent man, and a very knowledgeable man. So if you go and Google or go onto YouTube and look at Professor John Christie, and be aware, there will be people who say, John Christie, you know, he's a, consp- he's a conspiracy theorist, or he's funded by the fossil fuel industry. Of course, because they are part of the cult. There are members of the cult whose job it is to attack anyone who, who encourages you to question the belief system of the cult. It's their job to go on the offensive and kind of smear the reputation of anyone who might um, get you questioning the cult belief.